Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry in the Acidic Environment and the latest video on solubility of CO2 in water. Up until now we've started to have a little bit of a look at the acidic nature of non-metallic oxides and also the fact that um, we can study equilibrium systems as examples of where reactions do not go to completion and use Le Chatelier's principle to um, understand how systems will change. One of the applications is to the solution of carbon dioxide and water. And this happens in the blood, but it also happens in our soft drinks. And so uh, you will actually do an experiment in order to try and measure the amount of dissolved carbon dioxide in a uh, soft drink. Uh, and I'll leave that um, for uh, your, your classwork to do, or perhaps for a, a later video. Uh, but in this one, we want to have a look at a little bit of a theory behind of what happens when carbon dioxide is dissolved in water. So the first thing we need to know is carbon dioxide is obviously uh, one of the gases that's in very small concentration in the atmosphere, one upon which there's a great deal of discussion. But this particular gas can dissolve in water and become um, uh, aqueous, so carbon dioxide aqueous. So if we think about a soft drink, maybe a bottle of soft drink, um, where there's a small gap at the top, and that gap will be filled. Um, maybe it'll be a, a vacuum, but maybe it'll be a small space that'll be filled with gas. And there'll be a certain amount of carbon dioxide there that's in the gas form, and there'll be a certain amount of carbon dioxide that's dissolved in the water. The problem with this is that when the carbon dioxide is in the water, it reacts with the water molecules to form this weak acid, carbonic acid. So if there is no carbonic acid, then this will move this way, and this will move this way in order to use up extra carbon dioxide, take it out of the atmosphere and put it into the um, solution. Now, the problem with carbon dioxide is it is slightly, only slightly soluble in water. And when it's bubbled into the water, we can establish an equilibrium, an amount of carbon dioxide that exists in the water and outside the water. Now remember, equilibrium can only be established in a closed system, so if you unscrew the cap off the bottle and leave it off, it's now an open system, so it will not reach equilibrium. In fact, one of the things that will happen is that the pressure will not stabilise. That's the problem. When you put the cap on, there's a certain space between the liquid and the cap, and that space will be filled with gas, with air, creating a pressure. So carbon dioxide will... Um, if that space is very large, actually bubble out of the solution in order to fill the space. So where we have a low amount, where we have a low pressure, Le Chatelier's principle says that our equilibrium will shift to counter that, to increase that pressure, which means that the carbon dioxide will come out of the water to increase the pressure. Pressure is one thing that affects the solubility of the carbon dioxide in water. If we force more, we can get it to drive the other way. If we decrease pressure, we get it to bubble out. But the solubility of carbon dioxide is also dependent on temperature. And the CO2 solubility will decrease as the temperature increases. If we warm the solution, then some more of that carbon dioxide will come bubbling out. Now, in addition to our understanding of the acidic nature of carbon dioxide, we also know that because uh, one of the products of carbon dioxide solution in water is uh, the carbonic acid, this too will react with water and produce hydrogen ions. In this case, these hydrogen ions are in the form of what we call hydronium ions. And we'll talk more about these. Um, at a later date. Hydronium ions are water molecules with a hydrogen ion attached to them and bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate ions uh, as well. And so what this does will increase um, the hydrogen ion concentration and therefore will decrease the pH of the solution. So there's a couple of important things going on in this particular equilibrium. The carbonic acid uh, will be ionized in water to produce the bicarbonate ions and to increase the concentration of the hydrogen ions. And this is one of the reasons why there's a pH implication to the solution of carbon dioxide in water. At the bottling plant, we have to force the carbon dioxide in. If you've got a soda stream, you've done the same thing. You've 
pushed carbon dioxide under pressure into the liquid in order to um, push the equilibrium to the right, favour that extra um, formation of uh, acid and therefore slightly increase the concentration of H plus ions. So we get a slightly acidic um, taste to our soda water. Often that's why a lot of um, soft drinks have added sugar to counteract that acidic often sour taste. So when you open the container you hear the sound of the gas escaping and you can see the bubbles of gas releasing from the solution when it's poured. That opening of the container actually creates an open system but it also allows gas to escape which decreases the pressure above the liquid and means that more of the carbon dioxide is going to come out of the solution in order to reform carbon dioxide gas. This is the um, consequence of looking at an open system. So the system becomes open when the cap's off and then the equilibrium will shift to the left. So effectively the carbon dioxide gas is being produced from carbon dioxide that's coming out of the solution um, in the form of carbon dioxide, carbonic acid and so on. If you leave the top open, of course, the soft drink will eventually lose all of its acidity and dissolve carbon dioxide, and we call that becoming flat. And you can increase that by increasing the energy by shaking it or warming it. And we will do an experiment, as I say, to look at this in a little bit more detail. But I hope this fills in a few of the little uh, theoretical blanks for you. Thanks for watching.